In Jesus' name we pray. If you believe God is here and God is answering your prayer, in Jesus' name we pray. If you're opening the door, opening the door for the Redeemer, Deliverer, and the Liberator to come into your heart, your life today, in Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you. We bless your name for your love. For you love the world so much that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever in this world and in this country, in this place today will believe, will have life eternal, life abundant, life spiritual, life conquering, life prevailing, life overcoming. Lord, we pray that today, that life that Jesus brought from glory will come in every heart, every life, in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, you come as Savior. You come as healer. You come as deliverer. You come as liberator. You come as redeemer. You come as master, king, and Lord over the life of everyone here, in Jesus' name. We pray none will reject we pray none will refuse. We pray none will rebel. Lord, we pray we'll not be like the Pharisees that opened their eyes they couldn't see. We'll not be like the Sadducees that heard but they couldn't understand. We'll see, we'll hear, we'll perceive, we'll receive. And we're going to have your blessing in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Thank you very much. We can sit down. Once again, we're rejoicing because Christ came. And as we look at Exodus once again, we're referring to the history of the children of Israel. So that from what God did for the children of Israel, We'll see what he wants to do for the people of God today. Because he says, I am God. I change not. And because of his desires at that time. And because of his purpose. And because of his covenant. He wants to do the same thing for everyone. For every family. For every community. In fact, for every nation, in fact, for the whole world today, what did he do? He came to break the Egyptian bondage, Egyptian yoke, Egyptian oppression over the people of God. Exodus chapter 3. In Exodus chapter 3, I read from verse 7, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry by reason of the taskmaster. For I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. And to bring them up out of that land. Unto a good land. And a large. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Perizzites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression. The Almighty God is saying, they are seeing the oppression of the people. Then it says, and I have also seen the oppression where will the, the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore. Therefore, because I see it, and because I hear it, and because I feel it, it says, Moses, come. Deliverer, come. Redeemer, come. Come now, therefore. And I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. 
That was the intention of the Lord. He called Moses. And as he called Moses, he said he wanted just one thing. That the people of God, the Israelites, the creatures of God, will be delivered out of the Egyptian bondage. And do you know that that's what the Lord has done for us? In fact, he told Moses. And he said, what I raised you up to do for one nation. I'm going to raise up another one. A greater one. A better one. A more righteous one. A more faithful one. I'm going to raise up another one. That will do what you've done. But we'll do it not just for one nation now. We'll do it for the whole world. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Verse 15, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hug him. And so you understand, we're making a transition from Moses unto Christ. We're making a transition from the one that was to the one that will be. We're making a transition from the one that was with a single nation, Israel. And we're making that transition to another one that will be the Lamb of the world, the Savior of the world, the Lord of the whole world, the Lord of all nations. A transition from Moses unto Christ. What did Moses come to do? He came to set free. He came to deliver. He came to break the Egyptian yoke, Egyptian bondage, Egyptian oppression upon the lives of the people. And the Lord said, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him shall ye hearken. Verse 18, I will raise them up a prophet. From among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words, remember that, I'll put my words of redemption, my words of righteousness, and my words of liberation. I'll put my words, my words of authority, my word of healing, my word of victory, and my word of deliverance and dominion. I'll put my word, my eternal word, the word that operates miraculously. I'll put that word in his mouth. Then it says, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass, verse 19, that whosoever will not hack him unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require each of him. Well, then we understand, like the Lord planned redemption, liberation, and freedom for the whole of the nation of Israel. And he planned it not just for a few people in that nation. He planned it for every single soul, every single individual in that nation. Jesus Christ has been said that he will proclaim and provide and that he will purchase a freedom. A redemption, a redemption of the whole world, not just for one individual, not just for a few selected people. Redemption, deliverance, freedom, liberation unto everyone. Freedom from sin and freedom from sickness and freedom from Satan. He has come to provide for everyone and you'll receive your portion in Jesus' name. Give me a good amen. We're going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the description of bondage and oppression. You have to know what bondage is, what oppression is, and then you'll be able to know what Christ has come to deliver us from. Description of bondage and oppression. Number two, the deliverance from bondage and oppression. After the description, then it's going to be a deliverance for you, for everyone here this day in Jesus' name. 
and then decision to be free. You have to make up your mind. Decision to be free from bondage and from oppression. Number one, the description of the bondage. Let's look at Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1. I'm reading to you there from verse 11. Exodus 1 from verse 11. As we look at the bondage of the children of Israel in Egypt, you're looking at the bondage of every man in the world. Egypt representing the world and Israel representing the whole, the whole people now that the Lord wants to bring that redemption, that liberation, that freedom, that deliverance to. Exodus chapter 1 verse 11. Therefore, did it set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens? That's the description of the bondage. They said taskmasters over them. Who did that? Pharaoh did that. Who does Pharaoh represent? He represents Satan, the devil, the wicked one, the adversary. And that wicked one, Satan, says, taskmasters over the people of the world, over every individual, to afflict the people of the world, to vex the people of the world, to torment the people of the world, to destroy the people of the world. That's what Jesus said, the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And then he said, but I am come. That she might have life. And that she might have that life more abundantly. As Pharaoh said, the taskmasters over these people. So the devil has said, taskmasters, tormentors, the people that have lived. He has set them over every individual in the world that doesn't know Christ. Verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Have you realized the more we have war in the world, oppression in the world, the more the population of the world is increasing. Have you realized the more people are suffering in the cities, the more the villagers are still rushing into the cities. That means then, although the oppression is there, the biological multiplication of the population is still there. And in verse, eight, in verse 12, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to suffer with rigor. The Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Not only Pharaoh now, but all the people that are subject to Pharaoh. Not only Satan now, but all the people that are subject to Satan. They make the affliction of the people of the world to be terrible. And they make the affliction of the world to bring pain and rigor upon the lives of the people. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. They made their lives bitter. Look at your own life. Any kind of hardness there, bitterness there, oppression there their regard, their pain, their painful experiences. And it says that this is what the Egyptians did to the people of God in that land. In Deuteronomy chapter 26, we're looking at the description further of the bondage and the oppression. In Deuteronomy chapter 26, Deuteronomy chapter 26, I'm reading from verse 5. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, is Syrian ready to perish? Was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. Hard bondage. Have you ever gone through something hard to bear? Hard to swallow? Hard to go through? That's the bondage. Have you ever gone through something that looks like real affliction? They afflicted us. They tortured us. They tormented us. Have you ever felt the pain? The affliction and the torment 
the vexation of the evil one in your heart, in your life, in your very family. The things that happen, and you say, if I could come out of this, thank God you are coming out. I said, thank God you are coming out. Let's look at Romans chapter 7. The description of the bondage, the description of the oppression in the heart of people, people in this world. Romans chapter 7. I read from verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold as a slave under sin. That's the oppression. That's the bondage. Without sin, there could be no suffering. Without sin, there would have been no sickness in the world. Without sin, there will be no satanic oppression in the world. What gives the devil, Satan, the leeway, the green light, the express way to come into any life and bring torment, affliction, and he devastates lives? What a sin. And here, Paul the Apostle, recapturing and recollecting, remembering the lie he believed before he knew the Lord. He said, I went through that too. He said, I was carnal, sold on the scene. For that which I do, I allow not. Have you ever realized that, you know, there are people in this world, the majority of the people in the world, they are not, they don't have ownership of their own soul. They don't have ownership of their own life. They are not the captain of their soul. They are not the master of their sheep. It's only what the devil directs they say. What the devil directs they do. And what the devil directs, that's what they experience. It says, what I do, I allow not for what I would that I do not. How many people don't want to drink all the same? They're still drunkards. How many people don't want to commit fornication all the same? They're still fornicators. How many people are afraid of HIV, AIDS? They don't want to commit adultery and yet they still commit adultery. How many people have seen that when you go into the cult, eventually you're going to get into a covenant and that covenant will destroy your life eventually. It's a covenant of death. It's a covenant of destruction. And even though they know that they still do that, if then I do that, I would not. I consent unto the Lord that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. You ever realize that? You don't want to lie, but you do. You don't want to be naughty, but you are. You don't want to go the evil way, but you still do. Why? Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good sin. For to will is present with me, resolution upon resolution, decision upon decision, but without the grace of God and without the freedom, the liberty that comes from Christ, it will be impossible to carry that out. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good sin. For to will is present with me, but to perform, how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. That's the bondage. It's the greatest of all bondages. And it is the mother, the root, and the spring of all bondages. It is this bondage to sin that brings all the other bondages to the affliction, all the other bondage to, to evil, to iniquity, to curse, to yoke, and to oppression, to poverty, to everything that is negative, and to affliction as well as 
to sickness. In Second Peter chapter 2, Second Peter chapter 2, the description of the bondage into which people have gotten into. I pray that this day will be your day of freedom. Did I hear you say, Amen? And today, the Lord will set you free and break every yoke of sin, every yoke of sickness, and every bondage of Satan from every life in Jesus' name. Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery. The lives are full of adultery. That's the bondage. That's the bondage. That is the bondage. It gives them venal disease, but the bondage is there. Give them HIV AIDS, but the bondage is there. Give them sorrow, but the bondage is there. It breaks their families. When a man commits adultery, when a woman commits adultery, the husband says, I'm not interested in you anymore. Go your way. Breaks families. And yet they do it. It's a bondage. They want to get out of it. At least they want their families to stay together. And they want their wives, they want their husband to have confidence and trust in them. But they cannot do it. Because there is a bondage having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and hatch their exercise with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozal, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Uh, you know, that Balaam, he was in bondage. He knew that where he was going, it was a journey to death. A journey to damnation. A journey to destruction. And yet, he continued in that journey. God sent an angel from heaven with a sword in the hand that was drawn. And said, your way is perverse before me. If the eyes had not seen me. And then turned out of the way. I would have killed you. Ye are on the highway to death. And to damnation and to doom. He knew it. But he still went on. How many people know that. The way of the sinner. Of the transgressor is hard. And yet. They keep on transgressing. How many people know that. The way of sinning. Is the way to hell. And they still keep on sinning. How many people know that the way of deception, the way of lying, is a way to the lake of fire? And they still keep on doing it. How could somebody do that? That's bondage. They want to be free, but as they come to Jesus, freedom will come. Deliverance will come. And they'll say, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you. Go and sin. No more. Then it says in verse 16, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass, speaking with man's voice for badge the madness of the prophet. The madness. There's a point where sinning becomes madness. There's a point where iniquity becomes madness. There is a point. Where rebellion against the will of God becomes madness. That the fellow just rushes on to his doom and to his death and to his destruction. Becomes total madness that even though you see the fire is ahead of him. What does he care? It just moves on. That means that the bondage has come to its climax. But if you are there, deliverance, deliverance, deliverance will come. Salvation will come and total freedom will come to your life, will come to every one of us in Jesus' name. And then it says in verse 7, these are wells without water. Clouds they are, carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words, of vanity. Their law through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who lived in error, 
while they promise them liberty. Can you imagine a Pharisee promising another one liberty? Can you imagine a slave of Satan, a prisoner, a captive of the enemy, promising other slaves freedom? It doesn't come that way. It comes from Calvary. It comes from the cross. It comes from the atonement of Christ. That as you look at Christ yourself, and you're not going through Peter or James or John or Matthew or Mary or Augustine or founder of a church, anybody, as you come to Christ yourself, and you're not looking at the promise by somebody who's in captivity himself, then is when the freedom walk up. You touch Christ, you touch freedom. You trust the Lord, you have freedom. And you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have freedom, and that freedom is here today. I said that freedom is here today. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein. They are again entangled that They are again entangled therein. The people who were free before. The people who were saved before. The people who were liberated before. But they come again into that corruption, into that pollution, into that captivity, into that bondage, into that oppression. For if after they, had, they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Unfortunately, that's what we saw with the children of Israel. They came out of Egypt and then they became entangled again, entangled again. They desired the onions and the garlics and the food they ate in Egypt. Eventually, they came back to their Syrian captivity, Babylonian captivity. And it was worse with them than it was in Egypt. I pray you'll not go back to bondage. God has set you free. I said you'll not go back to bondage. When you'll be free from the bondage of fornication and adultery, you go back again. That's going to be more terrible. The yoke of adultery, fornication, and smoking, marijuana, and the yoke of uh, drunkenness have been broken away from your life. And the yoke of occultism, sorcery, and witchcraft broken away from your life. If you go back to that again, it's going to be terrible. The bondage of the devil has been upon your life before. And then you came to know the Lord. If you go back to that again, that's going to be terrible. And the yoke of idolatry, sacrificing to idols, that was broken before. And then if you go back voluntary, voluntarily again into that yoke of idol worship, it's going to be worse than it ever was in your life. I pray that now God, as God delivers you today, it will seal up that way. You will never go back in Jesus' name. Look at verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his vomit again. The dog is turned to his vomit again. And that's what happens to a backslider. If they achieve sin, their great sin, had been deception before, had been 419 before, and then they are now born again. If they go back into sin, then they deepen themselves. In 419 again, in that hypocrisy, deception, and evil again. Because the Bible says it's happened to them. According to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the soul, the pig, the swine that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. But Jesus will set us free. I said Jesus will set us free. In John chapter 8, John chapter 8, verse 32, the truth is coming to you. 
and the knowledge of the Savior, the knowledge of the Redeemer is coming to you. The knowledge of the Liberator is coming to you. And it is the truth, the knowledge of that Savior. The knowledge of that Liberator. The knowledge of that Redeemer coming to you. As you receive that knowledge, as you believe that knowledge, as you trust that God is able to break every yoke, he breaks that yoke of sin out of your life. It will be done in Jesus' name. John chapter 8 verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. And were not, were never in bondage to any man. I told you the people who are used to lying, they keep on lying. Even in the presence of Christ, they keep on lying. Even in the presence of the liberator who says, Oh no, open up, tell the truth, accept the truth, and let the truth set you free. Even in the presence of Christ, they'll keep on lying. We have never been in bondage to any man. How about Pharaoh? Any man. How about Sennacherib? Any man. I about Herod, any man. I about Nebuchadnezzar, any man. I about Belshazzar, any man. Will never be in bondage to any man. How sayest thou ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is what? Tell me out loud. Is a servant of sin. Whosoever, whosoever, brothers and sisters, let's stay with the Bible. Let's remain with the Bible. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever. You know, there are people that idolize some individuals, they worship personality. And the Bible says, whosoever committed sin, is a servant of sin. But they worship these personalities to the point they disregard the words of Jesus. Anyone, anyone there, anyone anywhere committing sin is a servant of sin. And that's why the Lord has come. He comes to set us free. We shall be free. I said we shall be free. And the servant abideth not in the house forever. You may worship them. The servant abideth not in the house forever. You may exalt them above the Bible. But the servant of sin, the servant of Satan, abideth not in the house of God forever. But the son abideth ever. If the son, that's Jesus, praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. If the Son, that's our Redeemer. If the Son, that's our Liberator. If the Son, that's the one, that's the yoke breaker. If the Son, that's the one that came to be Master, Lord, King, and Savior. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free. How? Ye shall be free indeed. That freedom is here today for every one of us in Jesus' name. Point number two, deliverance from bondage and oppression. Deliverance from bondage and oppression. Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. We're looking at verse 3. And Moses said unto the people, remember this day. You will remember this day. I said you will remember this day. Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt? Out of the house of bondage. That's it. Out of the house of bondage. Out of affliction. Out of habitual sin. Out of continual sinning. Out of rebellion. That's bondage. Out of the hardness of heart out of the besetting sin, falling, rising, falling, rising, falling, rising again. Don't you understand that that means that 
You cannot be free by yourself. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's going, it's going, it's coming, it's coming again. And that kind of habitual sinning, that kind of constant sinning, deliverance will come today in Jesus' name. For the Lord has come to take us out of that bondage. For by the strength of the hand of the Lord, the Lord has brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread, leavened bread be eaten. This is that day of deliverance. I said this is the day of deliverance. We're looking at Deuteronomy again. Deuteronomy. We're looking at chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Reading from verse 7. And see what the deliverance. The freedom. The liberty. The liberation. What it does in your life, in my life, in our lives together. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 7. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee out into a great, into a good land. A land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley. And vines, and fig trees, and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive, and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Give me a good amen there. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. Another amen. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. And it says, when thou hast eaten, you will eat. And art full, you will be full. And then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given thee. That's what he does. Look at verse 11. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Beware that you don't forget. That the Lord who has redeemed you, the Lord who has liberated you, the Lord who has delivered you, is always by your side. You want to honor him, exalt his word, reverence his word, respect his word, and count his word as well as personality. Count him and his word sacred, untouchable. That you will remember it is the Lord that has delivered you. Beware that thou forget not. The Lord thy God, in not keeping his commandment and his judgment and his statutes, which I commanded this the less when thou art eating and art full, after the Lord has liberated you, forgiven you, delivered you, set you free, after the Lord has prospered you, after the Lord has broken the yoke of sin and the yoke of sickness and the yoke of Satan out of your life. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart shall be lifted up. That's another bondage. That's another bondage. Pride is bondage. Great bondage. The people that will not come down from their ivory tower of being puffed up. That's bondage. It says, be very careful. After the Lord has blessed you, that your heart be not lifted up, that thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. He brought you out from the house of bondage in Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13 from verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dream of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder and a sign of the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee saying let us Go after all the gods 
This is talking about somebody that will come to you and make you to forget your redeemer. Let's look for another redeemer. There's somebody that will come to you and make you forget your savior. Let's look for another savior. There's somebody coming to you. Let's come. Let's look for another Lord, another king. To make you forget your Lord, Master, and King. This is talking about somebody that will come to you to forget the law of the Lord. Let's take another law, another principle, another direction, another, another rule of law. Somebody that will come to you and make you forget your Savior, your Lord, your Redeemer, your Deliverer. And then turn your mind away from the exalted Lord. You know, there are people that do that. In fact, there are religions that do that. In fact, there are people that call them, themselves Christians that do that. They, they remove the focus from Christ. They remove the focus from the Bible. And they put the focus on some individuals. And those congregations, all they know is obedience and loyalty to that individual. And if somebody will come to you like that and says, let us go after all that gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them, thou shalt not hearken to the words of that prophet. I will not listen. I say, I will not listen. Say that confidently. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dream of dreams. For the Lord your God Proves you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God. Why? Because he's the one that set you free. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God. Why? Because he's your redeemer. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God. Why? Because he's your liberator. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him. And keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death forget about him forget about him because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt that's the reason why this redeemer is so exalted, this deliverer is to be the exalted one, this liberator is to be the exalted one. And anyone that will come to kind of deceive you, turn you away from the Lord and from following after the words of your liberator, of your redeemer, of your savior and Lord, turning you away, you'll count him as if he's dead, as if he's gone, as if he doesn't have any existence. You don't recognize their existence anymore. You just turn your mind away from them. Because they wanted to turn you away from the one who has set you free. It's when you exalt the Lord, the master, the king, or the, the redeemer, the liberator like that. Your freedom will be permanent. It will be permanent in Jesus' name. That prophet, that dream of dreams shall be cut off. Because they are spoken to turn you away. From the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to trust thee out of the way, which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in, so shalt thou put evil away from the midst of thee. Amen. Amen. You know, the Lord will only give us freedom if he knows that after that freedom, we'll appreciate him for the freedom. We'll celebrate him for the freedom. We'll glorify him for the freedom that he'll become the most important one in our lives because of the freedom he has given us. And if any, any detractor, if any oppressor, if any deceiver will come after that to turn us away from that freedom, from the one who has set us free. We'll say, no, I make my life greater, my Lord, my deliverer, my savior, my redeemer, number one in my life. And I put him in that exalted position. 
and nobody is going to compete with my Lord in my heart. I'll be faithful, I'll be loyal for the rest of my life. You'll be faithful, be loyal to the, for the rest of your life. Look at verse 6. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom. Think about that. These are days when people don't understand that their first loyalty is to the almighty God. Their first loyalty is to our Savior. Their first loyalty should be to our deliverer, to our liberator. You know, there are people today that they worship their husbands. And if the husbands will tell them, forget about that doctrine, they forget about it. If their husband will tell them, forget about that devotion to the Lord, they forget about it. They have forgotten the Bible, that you must love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And that your liberate to your deliverer is the number one in your life. There are people today, they worship their wives. If their wife will tell them, honey, darling, you know what? I don't like that part of the Bible. It's okay, forget it, honey. We're not going to think about that anymore. But you know what the Lord is saying? After he has delivered you, after he has set you free, that this one who has liberated you, this one who has delivered you, it becomes number one in your life. It will be number one in our lives. I said it will be number one in our lives. Give me a good amen. amen. Apart from wife, your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter, the people that worship their children and they exalt a child, a child of theirs above the Lord. And if the child will say, Daddy, you know what? I don't, we don't like this. We younger generation, we don't accept this. If you change this, the son of the Lord, disrespect the Lord, forget your Savior, Lord, Redeemer, then there will be unity in the family. Otherwise, will make the family scatter. They worship those children. But the Lord is telling us that God will be number one. I said God will be number one. Our Savior, Lord, Redeemer, Liberator will be number one. There are other people apart from brother, apart from sister, apart from son, apart from daughter, apart from wife, apart from husband, they worship a religious leader. If the religious leader says, hey, this is it. We don't accept that part of the Bible. That's all for them. That's all for them. The religious leader has told them, we don't accept the totality of the word of God. Do you know there are people that come to the retreat here? All the messages they are hearing from the pulpit, from the Bible. They shun it. And whatever somebody tells them in the corner, that's what they accept. That's how they operate. That's what they do. And the word never has an inroad into their lives. Those are captives of men. And those are captives of carnal men, natural men, sinful men, antichrists. It says, look at number six again. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve all thy gods, which thou hast not known. Thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shalt thou I pity him. Neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him. And then it says, but thou shalt surely kill him. 
that is forget about him, forget about her. Forget about those people that will make you put down the Lord, the Redeemer, the Liberator. That will make you bury the Lord again. And then just put them on the throne. They want to compete with the Savior. Forget about them. They want to compete with your Lord. Forget about them. They want to compete with your life. Pray to redeem, deliver, forget about them. Thou shalt not consent unto them, but thou shalt kill them. Thine hand shall be forced upon him to put him to death. And towards the hand of all the people, why and thou shalt stone him with stones that he died. Because, because, because he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God which bought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. We're not going to come back into bondage anymore. I said we'll not come back into bondage anymore. This Lord is our Lord. This Savior is our Savior. This Redeemer is our Redeemer. He has set us free. And we're not going to come back to the yoke of bondage anymore in Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Who makes us free? Who makes us free? Who is our deliverer? Who is our liberator? Who is our savior? Who gives us freedom from sin? Who gives us freedom from sickness? Who gives us freedom from satanic affliction? Christ, stay with him. Stay with him. Stay with him. Don't allow any other person to take your heart. Stay with the Lord and your freedom will be permanent in Jesus' name. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty Wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We have looked at the description of bondage and oppression. We have looked at the deliverance coming to us from the Lord. Now we come to the point of decision. We come to the point of decision. And that's what actually makes everything to come to fruition, fulfillment in our lives. When we decide and we say, yes, I'm going to have this. That deliverance is going to be mine. Deliverance from sin. Deliverance from sickness. And deliverance from satanic, satanic oppression is going to be mine. It will be ours in Jesus' name. Ezra chapter 9. Ezra chapter 9 verse 9. Ezra chapter 9 verse 9. It says, for we were born men, yet our God has not forsaken us in our bondage. There you are, you're in bondage, and you're saying, I want to be free. I want to be free from sin. I want to be free from sickness. I want to be free from satanic affliction. Our God will not forsake you. He will not forget you. But he has extended mercy unto us. In the sight of the king of Persia, to give us a reviving to set up the house of our God and to repair the desolation thereof and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. And it says, so come to the Lord and you make up your mind and say, yes, Lord, I'm going to have it now. Then it will come to you because whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be set free. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall have that glorious liberty of the children of God. In Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. Rest from thy sorrow. It is coming. I said it is coming. And rest from the fear. And rest from the hard bondage. Rest from sorrow. 
rest from fear, rest from hard bondage, wherein thou was made to serve. You've been serving sin, serving Satan, serving self, serving sickness, or your money is going on the sickness. But now, this is the day when the Lord shall set you free. Free from sorrow, free from fear, and free from the hard bondage. I said free from the hard bondage. Then you will say in verse 5, The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. And the scepter of the rulers, the Lord has broken that away from your life. And now today, the freedom has now come. I said the freedom has now come. Job chapter 36. Job chapter 36. I'm looking at verse 8. And if they be bound in fetters and be holding in courts of affliction, then he showeth them their work. And their transgressions that they have exceeded. He openeth also their ear to discipline. And commandeth them to return from iniquity. If that is done, if they obey and serve him. They shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If they obey, if they obey, if they obey and serve him you will obey. I said you will obey and every yoke will be broken in your life in Jesus' name. This is the day and this is the time when that oppression will be taken away. This is the day and this is the time when liberation, liberty, freedom, deliverance, dominion will come to everyone and whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, that freedom will come at this very time in Jesus' name. I thought you say amen, amen, amen. Joel, Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2, Joel chapter 2. And it shall come to pass, verse 32, that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Anybody ready for that deliverance from sin, deliverance from sickness, and deliverance from satanic attack? It says whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, delivered from sin, delivered from sickness, delivered from affliction, delivered from oppression, delivered from bondage. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. If you are ready, you can stand up and begin to pray because that deliverance is coming. That deliverance is coming. That the yoke of sin will be broken. And the yoke of iniquity will be totally broken. And all that yoke of sinning and sinning, sinning and sinning, sinning and sinning, deliberate sin, premeditated sin, presumptuous sin, besetting sin, constant sinning, that yoke, once that yoke is broken, all the other yokes are going to be broken. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Satan uses sin to bind people. You see, it's adultery to bind people. You see, it's fornication to bind people. And he uses all the drunkenness to bind people. Satan uses all the smoking of marijuana or smoking of cigarettes to bind people. Satan uses all those iniquity. He uses idolatry to bind people. Satan uses occultism to bind people. And once he gets you in, once he sucks you in, then the rest is easy for him. You're telling the Lord now, oh Lord, deliverance, deliverance, deliverance is what I want. Deliverance from all my sin. Freedom from all my sin. And total, total, complete freedom from lying, from deception, from hypocrisy, from rebellion, from unrighteousness, from wickedness. Oh Lord, total deliverance from all my sin. That's the bondage, that's the bondage, the force bondage to be broken. The force, force, force bondage shall be broken.
And once that is broken, the rest is easy. If the Son therefore shall set you free, free from sin, free from sin, free from sin, ye shall be free indeed. Free from all the iniquity, ye shall be free indeed. If the Son therefore shall make you free, free, free. Free from that all, all that wickedness. If the Lord shall make you free, free from lying. Free from deception. Free from the bondage that wants to bundle you up and take you to hell. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Freedom has come. Freedom has come. Our liberator, redeemer, Christ, Savior is born. And it's for you, it's for me, it's for everyone. Tell the Lord, Lord, set me free. For the sake of eternity, set me free. For the sake of your atonement, set me free. Because of your suffering, set me free. Because of the blood you shed for me, set me free. Because you have a place for me in heaven. And only those who are free can get there. Set me free. Free from sin. Free from sin. Free from sin. Free from the yoke of bondage. Compulsive sin. Overpowering sin. Set me free. Set me free. Set me free. If the Son therefore shall make you free, that's his work. He specializes in setting people free. And whosoever, and whosoever, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, delivered from sin, delivered from sinning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Sinning, that's the work of the devil. Being powerless, impotent, and weak. I cannot live victoriously. That's the work of the devil. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Hand over your life to the Lord, your heart, your spirit, your soul, Hand over to the Lord. Lord, I want freedom. Lord, I want freedom. The kind of freedom that gets you free to walk in the highway of holiness. Walking in the highway of holiness until you get to that paradise, heaven, the promised land. Set you free. Set you free. Set you free. And you shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth, the truth about Christ the Savior. And you shall know the truth, the truth about Christ the Redeemer. And you shall know the truth, the truth about Christ the Liberator. And you shall know the truth, the truth about Christ the Deliverer. And the truth, and the truth, and the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Free in your soul. Free in your spirit that you no longer be sold under sin. You don't be a slave of sin anymore. A slave of immorality anymore. A slave of idolatry anymore. A slave of man anymore. Set free. Set free. Set free. 
It breaks the yoke. It sets the captives free. Breaks the yoke. Sets the captives free. He can do it right now. The Father has sent the Son. And the angel said, And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save. He shall deliver his people from their sins. That's why the Father sent him. To set you free. Free from sin. Free from sinning. Turn around your life. Make your focus on heaven. He sets me free. He sets me free. He sets me free. No more in bondage. No more bound. No more tied. Released. Set free. Yoke broken. Oppression taken away. Affliction taken away. Free. Free indeed. Free from sin. Free from self. Free from sorcery. Free from sickness. Free from sorrow. Free. Free from suffering. Free. Free from Satan. And whosoever, that's you, whosoever, that's you, whosoever, shall call on the name of the Lord. Whosoever, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Why don't you call? Why don't you call? Why don't you call? From all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Call on him. Call on him. Call on him. Whosoever shall call. You are the one to call. You are the one to tell him, I need deliverance. I need freedom. I need salvation. I need deliverance from sin. From self. From Satan, you are the one to call. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Anything that will destroy you. There's something more terrible than sickness. Sin. Transgression. Iniquity. That's more terrible than sickness. Sin will drag the soul to hell. Sin will torment the sinner in hell. Afflict in hell. Vex in hell. Sickness is only for a short time here in the world. Sickness is temporary. Sin is terrible. Have an eternal consequence. But he will set you free. 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 That's the greatest of all freedom. That's the highest of all freedom. Freedom from sin. Deliverance from sin. Liberation from iniquity. That's the greatest. And when that is done, the rest will follow. When that is done, the rest will follow. Call on the Lord, call on the Lord, call on the Lord. Set me free. And if the Son shall make you free, if the Son shall make you free, if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free, free indeed. In Jesus' name we pray.
give me a freedom. Amen. Once again, a freedom. Amen. Free from sin. Free from sin. Free from sin. I'm free from sickness. I'm free from satanic attack. The Lord has the threefold freedom for you, for me, for everyone right now. If you raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. We celebrate Christ, we exalt Christ, we honor Christ because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Lord, we come to exalt you today as our Lord, as our Savior, as our Redeemer, as our Liberator. Oh Lord, we pray the liberation, the freedom you brought will be ours now in Jesus' name. We're asking the Lord that everyone here that has confessed their sin, forsaken their sin, Turn away from their sin. You save them right now. And you bring your victory. And you bring righteousness. Holiness into every life. In Jesus name. Crush the head of the evil one. Destroy the works of the devil. All the sickness. All the affliction. And all the vexation of the enemy. Put a stop to them. In every life. In Jesus name. I pray right now you send your healing authority and your healing power, your power to deliver, your authority to deliver into every life now. Heal the sick. Destroy the works of the devil. Set the captives free. And remove all affliction from your safe, forgiven people in Jesus' name. Confirm the miracle of salvation. Confirm the miracle of sanctification. Confirm the miracle of holiness. Confirm the miracle of deliverance from sin, from sickness and Satan. Confirm the miracle of our deliverance and liberty and freedom right now in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said...